shop to show Lava Dasco Radio. I have a special guest, such an interesting guest because I've never had a head coach before on my show. He's the first head coach I'm ever going to interview. Hopefully be many more, but he's the first head coach I'm gonna be interviewing. He's a former head coach of a lot of teams, a lot of you know, college football programs. He's recently um a head coach of the Salt Lake Stallions of the Alliance of American Football League. But he's known for his one back offensive system and won two national championships at the University of Miami. That's when he has the best success for his winning championships. And uh, from 1989 and then in 1991, uh, he has you know, a record of 179 wins, 96 losses, and one tie. And winning since 650, he joins me. And also he coached in the NFL as well, Seattle Seahawks and the San Francisco 49ers. And he joins me live on the phone. Welcome to the Rashad Mitchell Show, Dennis Erickson. Hello, Dennis Erickson. Yes, sir. Yeah, welcome What's to the up? yeah, welcome to the Rashad Mitchell Show. Thanks for coming on. Are you there? Are you there, Dennis? Are we, Are we on? Yeah, we on right now. Yeah, it's two o'clock in the Eastern Standard oh. Time. Yeah, we on. Okay. Okay. Ready? You ready? You ready to um get started? No, I'm ready. Okay, I'm okay, ready. all right. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Um, this is gonna this basically gonna talk about your coaching career. Um, what made you want to get into coaching? Because you coach for a lot of uh, programs in college football as well as NFL. Let's start with that. The coaching aspect. What made you want to get into you know being a head coach? Well, I was raised. I was raised in football. My, my father was a. I uh, had high school coach. Also, as an assistant in college, so you know when I was growing up, uh, uh, you know I was on the bus going to games when I was about six or seven years old. So uh, that's where it all started, and, and, uh, and then I continued to, after high school go ahead and play football uh, in college at Montana State University. But it's always been something I wanted to do. And I don't think I ever thought about doing anything else because that's just how I was raised. Okay, so you coached, I was going to get into like the head coaching aspect, you coached at um, Idaho, obviously he was an offensive coordinator, you know, for San Jose State, Fresno State in Idaho, Idaho. Um, the Idaho job, talk about, you know, being a head coach for Idaho in 1982, talk about that uh, experience as a head coach well, for Idaho. Was, well, that was my first opportunity to be, be head coach, obviously, you know, I've been in with Bill Belknap, was the athletic director at that time, and, and I've known him from the Jack Elway, John Son, San Jose State, you know, my dad, and just a lot of different places. So uh, I finally got the opportunity uh, to coach at, at the University of Idaho. I was born and raised in, in Seattle, Washington, Everett, Washington. And was very aware of the University of Idaho because it's not very far away. And, and uh, it was in the big sky at, at that time. And I'm back in there now. But it was just a great opportunity. Okay, so you moved from there to Wyoming. You was only there for one year. What happened with that? You were just there at you Noma know, as a head coach in 1986. Uh, why, why one year? Well, what happened with that? Well, well I, had, I had an opportunity. Okay, 
Yeah, we won't get to the, that you know, in a few minutes, but the Washington State job, he took the coach, head coaching job at Washington State, and from 1987 to 1988, I want to talk about that your biggest wins as a coach was against UCLA. They was the number one team in the country, and you won uh, 34 to – that was a big win. Talk about that, you know, memories of you know, being well, that, that team because that Troy Aikman was on the other side. Yeah, that was a, that, that put us across the Washington State. We went down there. They were number one in the country undefeated at that time, and we went down to the Rose Bowl. And, you know, beat them in a, a, a tremendous football team, like you said. And we ended up scoring at the end, and it was uh, our quarterback was Troy Aikman, who we all know, and uh, he was a great player. But I had some good players too. I had a quarterback by him, Tim Rose, a lot of plays in the league for me. And, uh, running back Steve. Who played in Atlanta for many years and even played for me at Seattle. So we, uh, we really had a good football team on both sides of the ball. And we were able to pull that, pull that thing off, and it gave us a lot of momentum going through the end of the season. And having the opportunity in those days to, in 1988, to, to go to a mobile game that wasn't that many mobile games like there are now. So yeah, it gave us an opportunity to, to go play Houston and New Orleans. Okay, so the Miami uh, Hurricane football program reached out to you. Um, what was the feeling? Because now you're dealing with a high-profile you know, job in terms of what they was doing at the time. Jimmy Johnson built the program, so pick up, picked up where he left off with um, Howard Snell. So now you're coming in with a lot of high expectations. Talk about that experience, you know, going to that program with the expectations very, very high. Obviously, just talk about that, you know, coming to Miami for the first time and, you know, to pick up where the you know, program, program was left off as far as their success and winning championships. Talk about that experience when you first came to Miami oh, in 89. Yeah, yeah well, exactly. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, the hardest job is following the, the people, you know, like Jimmy and Howard. Uh, you know, and keeping it at that, at that level, uh, as I look back at it, that was probably harder than, you know, taking a program that was not very good building it up because the expectations, as you said, were high. And I wouldn't have even gotten the job. The San Bank Commission was the athletic director there. He was a coach in college at Montana State and was the AD of Washington State at one time. And, you know, when Jimmy laid, laid in recruiting when, when he got the Cowboy job, I, I had the opportunity. I couldn't turn it down. So he went there, and uh, he just had to keep, he had to keep it going. Again, the expectations were so high. They lost a game or two games at the most. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't a successful season. So, uh, you know, it was a lot, a lot more difficult job than, than you think. You know, we were there six years, won two national championships. And, you know, we've been maintained, uh, like myself, my staff. It was, it was difficult, but also uh, because of the program, we had great players and great speed. And, and uh, you know, so, so. Even going was, was hard, but obviously, you know, Jimmy built it. But I, I think the guy that was really responsible for it to start was Howard Snow. I don't know that he gets enough credit because he's the one that started it. And, you know, Jimmy had to come in and keep it going, and then I came in and kept it going. So it was a, it was a fun time. It was a fun time, you know, coaching those players and, you know, had a lot of fun. Okay, um, during your tenure at Miami, obviously you had some big games. Again, I want to talk about was the North End game in 89, November 25th, 1989, where your team won 27-10. Uh, right. They was the number one team. Come yeah. talk about that experience, you know, winning, beating them, because they had lost the previous year, 31-30. Talk about that game at the Orange Bowl. Well, that was, you know, one of the greatest games I've ever been involved in. And, and, uh, and then when you talk about the Orange Bowl, that brings back a lot of memories part of the problems that they've had over the years and when they quit playing the Orange Bowl. But, but they had a great season. We lost we lost a game in the middle of the season and went to a really great Florida State team and beat Bobby Bowden. And they lost a couple games, but we kept you know, getting better and better. And, and, uh, you know, the atmosphere in the Orange Bowl, I played a lot of games, coached a lot of games, I should say, in the Orange Bowl. And it always has had a great uh, atmosphere. But for that particular Probably the most amazing atmosphere I've ever been in, or you know, this 
So, uh, 1991, uh, you won your second national championship. That was a special season because, you know, the previous year, uncharacteristically for Miami, you know, you lost a couple of games. You lost to BYU and you lost to uh, Notre Dame. But 91 was a special year. Actually, last year was the 30th anniversary of your second championship that you had. As a coach, talk about um, some games I want to get into was the Houston game because that game was David Klingler, that high-profile offense, going against your defense and you know obviously your offense too so about beating them you have won 40 to 10 and in, in the orange bowl against well, Houston. That, well that was uh you know that was a game they had uh, Houston had david klingler they were uh, running a lot of shoot uh, at that time uh, i believe was their head coach and uh, it was a thursday night So the next uh, game I want to talk about during that 91 season was um, the Penn State game. That was a very competitive game. You won 26 to 20. Talk about you know, winning that game because that was a huge game you know, at that time against Penn State. Talk about that game. Yeah, well, we were both. So the game of the year that year, obviously, was the wide right one against uh, Florida State. That was, you know, a defensive battle. You know, 17-16, you win that game. It's about winning up in uh, Tallahassee, 17-16, to take over the number one spot. Well, I mean, that's that probably So you win your second national championship against Nebraska, 22 nothing. It was rare for you know, a Nebraska program to get shut out, you know, lose like lost, you know, what you 
did to Denver 22. Not talk about that win. You know, you won your second well, that's championship. That's a big win. I, I think that that year kind of turned uh, things around for Nebraska. To be very honest, you know, I think Tom Osborne at that, that time and Tucker and I have talked about it over the years. You know, they had to make a decision on what, what they wanted to do, and you know, our, our secret on defense was we didn't do a lot of things on defense. What was done or what I got. To So what we did in recruiting a lot of times was make uh, you recruit linebackers and make them down defensive ends. And that would make them extremely fast in defensive end. We'd make defensive ends as go bottom and move them inside and you know, play tackles or even tight ends. And then, you know, we take safeties and move down a linebacker and so the most important thing was speed. And in that game that's what it was all about. We were just faster than they were. And, uh, you know, I know that after that game, that Coach Osborne started to recruit like that as far as what they were going to recruit uh, defensively. You know, they turned their program around uh, uh, and it's going to get better. But it was a game that we pretty much dominated uh, you know, all the time. Like you said, the shout out to Nebraska on very many times. Okay, so. 1992, you got a chance to win back-to-back uh, national championships. Obviously, you had you know a tough offseason with the Hurricane Andrew. You know, you beat Iowa. You had a lot of close games. You know, Arizona, you won eight to seven. Wild right two. You know, 1916, and you know you beat Penn State 17-14. But the game we want to get into, obviously, is the game against Alabama, the national championship game. You had a chance to win back-to-back. You had a 29-game winning streak. They had a, you no, know, I think like a 20 game win streak. What went wrong? Because to lose 34 13 was rare for Miami to even lose. They had lost like two, three years. But talk about, you no, know, unfortunately well, losing that game. Well, I'll tell you what, they were a good team, number one. I mean, they had great speed. They had, you know, some great defensive players. And uh, they made some plays that you know, they got a couple of turnovers on us and kind of turned, turned the game a little bit in the, in the second half. Well, they played better than, than we did, and, and we didn't play as well as we should have. But uh, when you look at their roster, they, they, they had a, a couple number one picks playing in the defensive front. So I mean, they had they had some talent, and, and they, which they've always had, is and they have now. But uh, yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that was a, an upset. That was a game that really, really hurt the season. We had won a lot of games, but you know, going through Hurricane Andrew. So 1993, very uncharacteristic. Once again, it's like the 1990 team. You know, where you lost two games, you lost three games, went nine and three. The first season with fewer than 10 wins since 1985. You lose 29 nothing to Arizona Fiesta Bowl. You come back strong in '94, and uh, unfortunately you lost to, to Washington. You know that losing that you know 58 game on winning streak, uh, but you still had a chance to win national championship if you played against Nebraska. You talked about how they, you know, Osmond started to recruit guys from the state of Florida and started getting faster. And you unfortunately lose 24 to 17. You had a 17 7 lead. But if you talk about that, you know, unfortunate chance for you to win your third national championship as a coach. You talk about that. Well, yeah, we had an opportunity. We had them at home. And uh, uh, we made some mistakes in that game. And, uh, you know, Nebraska was a much better football team. Back and forth, we, we, we turned it over a couple times. We, uh, you know, did it, did it, get it in the end zone in the, in the red zone. We had some opportunities. And didn't make the decision, uh, you know, as they did. But uh, we were, we were pretty 
young and uh, you know, we had some foreign staff, Ray Lewis was a freshman, I believe. So we were, we had a good football game. We just couldn't get it done. Okay, so unfortunately that was your last uh, game as a college coach. So what made you want to get into the NFL? Obviously the NFL, you know, was a, you know, obviously it's bigger than college. So what made you want to leave and get into the um, NFL scene as far as like being a head coach in the NFL? Well, in those days, the NFL was quite different than, than, than they are now. I mean, it's a, uh, you know, it was, it was a better game, in my opinion. And, and I, you know, I turned down a couple of NFL jobs. And, uh, the Seattle job, I didn't investigate probably well enough, but that's where I was born and raised. The Seahawks were, you know, there when, when, you know, when I was in college. To research, yeah, when you came your first season, you switched uh, quarterbacks, uh, Rick Meyer, and you went to the John Freeze. You know, you had recruited him when he was at Iowa. Talk about that experience, you know, coaching a guy that, you know, in college that you recruited, and now he's with, you know, the team that you're coaching with Seattle. Talk about that experience. Well, John was, John was a good player. And, uh, you know, he drafted me at the Chargers for a long time. You know, I had an opportunity to you know, pick him up in free agency. Rick was the quarterback. He was a third off John. Uh, actually, John came in and you know, played pretty well for us. And, uh, you know, like I said, it was, it was good to have him. He knew what I wanted. I, you know, I thought he played well. He was, you know, didn't play well enough that year to get into the playoffs. Yeah, um, in 97, you uh, coach Warren Moon. Obviously, he's a Hall of Fame. Talk about that experience, you know, coaching Warren Moon. Had a great arm himself. Talk oh. about that experience, coaching Warren Moon. Warren, Warren Moon was a great pleasure to coach. He's been around the block a lot of times. You know, he played in Edmonton for all those years. Uh, you know, uh, the Canadian League and then he even played in Houston. You know, I had him when he was, you know, 40 some years old. And uh, I'll tell you what, I have never in my life So the game I want to talk about also in '98 against the Jets. You know, obviously that was a, a bad call with Vinny Testaverde yeah. um, scoring a, on a touchdown that was you no know, wasn't ruled a touchdown. Talk about that because that was you had you had played great in that game, but lost in a controversial uh, touchdown against the Jets. Talk about that game. Well, brought, brought in the history replay. Yeah. Uh, that particular play was because We win that game. Yeah. 
hammer come off and go across the line. They thought it was a ball, they gave it a touchdown, and you know, they, sh they showed it on this two big play that, you know, obviously they knew that it wasn't a good call, no defense was going to get it. And uh, so I did one thing in, in, in the NFL is to draw the rules for replay. But that's what it does to start because the next year they had it. Yeah, so now that was your last uh, game as a, uh, you know, last season with the uh, Seattle Seahawks. That season now in 99, you turn to the college ranks and you go to Oregon State and uh, a team that was, you know, a cellar dweller in the Pac-10 at the time. Uh, talk about that experience, you know, coming to uh, Oregon State, going back to college football. Well, I went to, I went to Oregon Thousand, that, that's your second year. You, you know, yeah, Oregon State went 11 and one. They snapped a 33-year losing streak to the USC Trojans. You earned a share of the Pac-10 Conference Championship for the first time since the uh, conference expanded to 10 teams in 1978. So it was the first time, you know, the Beavers won at least a share of a conference championship since 1964. And you develop a national reputation because, you know, the, the, your offense, the swarming defense, and you beat Notre Dame 41 to nine. And you know, that was you no know, great achievement coming to. Oregon State, like you were saying, they, they wasn't used to winning. They had you know, a lot of losing that they was dealing with. Talk about that experience, that second season beat Notre Dame in Fiesta Bowl, 41-9. Uh, 2000 season was probably one of the most fun I've ever had. And, uh, you know, earlier in the year, we stuck out against the Eastern Washington. Mm -hmm. So, 2001 season, before the season started, Sports Illustrated ranked your, your program as the number one team in the country. So, obviously, the profile, you know, started to rise. But, unfortunately, um, the lack of returning time from the 2000 team took its toll and it went five and six. Uh, talk about that experience, you know, not being able to live up to the expectations that you're supposed to have had compared to the year before. Talk about that. Well, it was not what we had planned. I thought we had a pretty good football team coming back. Uh, we lost some real key players that you know people don't notice, but we had the quarterback back and whatever that happens. And we had some injuries and lost some games early. And uh, you know, it was, it was a season of uh, 
strong in there, but uh, you know, weren't quite as good as strong as the team is. People probably look at me. But the biggest thing, we're just trying to build stability in that program, which we did over the four year period. Okay, so you return back to the NFL. Talk about that experience going to, you know, now you in Seattle, you in Seattle, now you in San Francisco. Talk about, you know, coaching, you know, franchise that's known for winning two championships. Talk about that experience. Well, it was, it was the worst world I've ever been coaching. It was not a very good job at that time. And uh, I took it because I wanted to. So now you go back to you know, college, the college ranks again. You coach Idaho and, and Arizona State. Talk about those experiences. Obviously, you was at Idaho before, but talk about going, coming back to Idaho and also then going to Arizona State where you coached for you know, several seasons from 2007 to 2011. Well, the Idaho situation was, you know, when they gave me an opportunity, should have stayed there, I didn't. But, uh, you know, they were going back and forth on what conference or Okay, so let's talk about the alliance of American football, um, the South Saint Salt Lake uh, Stallions, or Major One you know, oh, that League. Oh, I'll tell you what, you talk about fun.
Okay, so um, obviously you coached the San Francisco 49ers and things of that nature for us coaching them. Talk about uh, tomorrow's uh, matchup between the Dallas Cowboys and San Francisco. Who you, how you feel about that game tomorrow as the playoffs start this weekend? Uh, with the 49ers and the, and the Cowboys? Yeah, yeah. What do you think of that game? think of the whole the other games like you, know, you got the Bengals and the uh, Raiders today later on today and then you got tonight Buffalo and uh, New England who, who, who you got in those games That's on Monday night. Uh, what about the Raiders and the Bengals? They play today. They play the first uh, playoff game today at 4.30. What do you think of the Raiders and the Bengals? Man, thank you for your time, man. Thanks for coming on the show. It was, it was a pleasure to interview a head coach. I never interview, interviewed a, a former head coach before, so thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. All right. Nice talking to you. Thank See you. Later. That's uh, head coach, former head coach, Dennis Erickson.